I know everybody wants to talk about the Oklahoma City Thunder and their young core and their treasure chest of draft picks right now, but a team I think that is right there with them is the Houston Rockets currently. This Houston Rockets young core is as deep as anybody else in the NBA, and they also have a lot of nice draft picks going forward as well. And I'm still not the biggest fan of them making that trade with the Nets this offseason, where they gave Brooklyn their picks back for the 25 and 26 draft, and they took on all of those Suns picks, because I do think even if the Nets kept Mikel Bridges, those picks were going to be great in a loaded 2025 draft class, but they're still in a great position going forward. Now, they have some major decisions to make. Alperun Shangun is probably going to want a rookie max extension at the end of the year, and same with Jalen Green. Fred Van Vliet, probably going to be off the books. That's $42 million there because he has a team option next year. Dylan Brooks's contract is descending. Jock Londale they can get off of after this year. Jeff Green and Steven Adams are off the books, so that's $20 million right there. And you have to figure out from this young core, who are the guys going forward? Is it going to be Jabari Smith Jr., a former number three overall pick? Amen Thompson, a former fourth overall pick. Reed Shepard, who you just drafted third overall in this draft, who I'm super high on. Because I think in a perfect world, Amen Thompson's the starting point guard. Jalen Green's the starting shooting guard. Reed Shepard is one of the best six men in all basketball that could be a combo guard. You have Cam Whitmore as a starting small forward. Jabari Smith Jr. as a starting power forward. Haven't even mentioned Tari Easton, who I think could be a great role player in this league coming off the bench as the seventh man. And then you have Shane Goon as your starting center. And I haven't used any of these upcoming draft picks that they have. Like what moves I'm going to have to make for this video, I'm not sure. But for this year, yeah, Fred Van Vliet is going to be taking up some of the Amen Thompson minutes and some of the Reed Shepard minutes. And we're not going to see a lot of these guys in the rotation. So it is going to be said that like Jay Sean Tate is no longer going to be a guy for us. So just for his rookie year, we're probably going to give Reed Shepard 17 minutes. Tari Eason's going to get 17 right now. Kim Whitmore is going to come off the bench, but I think at the end of the year, we'll start over. Dylan Brooks, him and um, Amen Thompson are, are going to get 24 minutes a night. We're going to go probably 30 to Jabari Smith, who I'm still super high on. 32 to Shane Goon. Let's go about 24 to Dylan Brooks. 32 to Jalen Green. Probably 29 in Fred Van Vliet. And under Ime Odoka, this is a four-star balance system. I think this team is going to be really good this year. We started off the season with a win against the Charlotte Hornets, but we ended up losing by 10 to the Memphis Grizzlies. And in real life, I think the Rockets could make the playoffs next year 100%, but it's probably going to be through the playing tournament rather than being a top six seed. Because I would not be shocked whatsoever if they're better than Golden State, if they're better than the Clippers. And hey, maybe they're better than the Lakers next year. All right, so we are here at the trade deadline. We are 26 and 24. This is pretty much where I think the Rockets could be around in real life. They went 500 last year, 41 in 41. I think they could probably end the season maybe two or three games above 500. And in the Western Conference, that is a pretty good record, 100%. We're currently the eight seed right now. And I'd like to bring playoff basketball back to Houston. It has been a minute. They've yet to make the playoffs in a few years in the post James Harden era. They've gone close last year. And Fred Van Vliet has been phenomenal. And I don't mind bringing back Fred Van Vliet if he's okay being a, vent, uh, a veteran mentor is what I was trying to say for a men Thompson going forward, not as a starter. I think Cam Whitmore needs to start we are going to bench Dylan Brooks. I was actually going to try to look at a Dylan Brooks trade at the deadline. So this is a shame that Ben Simmons is two and a half star trade value. He really shouldn't be. I was going to try to work out something like this because I would get off of Dylan Brooks's contract for the next three years. Brooklyn's in a rebuild and they could value Dylan Brooks to build up some trade value again to flip him for an asset because they're getting no assets in return for Ben Simmons and Killian Hayes. And I need Jalen Wilson to make this work. Jay Sean Tate could be a nice option for them. This is actually a pretty good trade for both sides. I don't even need the second rounder in this deal. Let's see if they counter it at all. They do not. So the problem is like they value Ben Simmons a decent amount. Like I'd even take on Shake Milton's three-year deal, which kind of stinks, but I'll take that over um, Dylan Brooks's. Ben Simmons is a free agent at the end of the year. I can't believe I'm trying to trade for Ben Simmons. Damn, they don't want to do that. I mean, I have some seconds that I would throw in. Could that change your mind? Damn, even if I throw in three seconds, okay, they want to keep Ben Simmons, unfortunately. Now, I am thinking about doing this trade with the LA Clippers. Let me just double check Norman Powell if he does have no option on his deal. So I would just have to pay Norman Powell $20 million next year. Could even flip him in the offseason. That is one year sooner than Dylan Brooks. And I think he's a little bit better as a bench player as they're trying to get more defense in Los Angeles. So we're going to do a Dylan Brooks for Norman Powell swap here at the 2025 deadline. And I think Norman Powell, yeah, is like just a better score for us off the bench. I think he's fine getting probably around 24 minutes a night. He's going to get the same amount as Cam Whitmore. But what's exciting is now I can get Cam Whitmore as my starting small forward. So unfortunately, we are not going to end the season above 500, which I think is fine. Now, the Thunder, I believe, have the right to swap our draft pick with the Clippers draft pick in this upcoming class. So we'll see where that goes in the lottery as Russell Westbrook wins six man of the year. No awards for any Rockets here. We'll see if we're on any all teams right now as we're going to get nobody on an all-NBA team. 
Nobody on an all-defensive team. I think Amen Thompson will make it at one point, but we do get Reed Shepard on all-rookie first team as a 20-year-old. He ended the season with 8.8 .8 points, but did shoot 38% from three and 83% from the line. So yeah, that is not going to earn us a spot in the play-in tournament. And hey, it earned the Clippers a spot in the play-in, so I guess they're not regretting that trade going from Norman Powell to Dylan Brooks as they finished one game better than us, damn. So we ended the season two games worse than last year, but I'm still excited about this team going forward. I think we do have to figure out is it going to be a Shangoon Jalen Green one two punch for us when we're trying to compete for an NBA title? Green, I mean, he was. Uh, he was all right, man. He shot 32% from three. There's going to be their inconsistencies. I know Rockets fans watching this right now are going to want to see me re-sign Jalen Green. I think that's going to be a question for us this offseason. I think we got to figure out if we're going to move Norman Powell on draft night. We're going to see if any of our draft picks become something because we actually own the Phoenix Suns first round pick, but they made the playoffs. And we'll see what Fred Van Vliet is asking for in free agency as the finals are between Julius Randle, who, who just won Western Conference Finals MVP with the Minnesota Timberwolves, and the Philadelphia 76ers. They beat the Knicks in six in the ECF as Minnesota beats OKC in six in the WCF. So let's see who wins the NBA Finals. Philly sweeps Minnesota, and Joel Embiid is your Finals MVP. And there goes LeBron. Chris Paul ended up on Minnesota, which is kind of cool. Him and Mike Conley. Uh, it would have been cool if they won a title together, but unfortunately, they do not. LeBron, Chris Paul, and Russell Westbrook all head to the Hall of Fame. So we'll make sure we get all this sorted out. 2K did not do a good job whatsoever making sure teams have accurate draft picks. I know it is confusing, but it's kind of lazy on their part. So let's see what ends up happening here. Spurs get number one from Atlanta. Wizards at two. We're going to have their pick protected, I believe, going forward from from the John Wall Russell Westbrook trade. Now it says that the Nets own our pick at thir our number 11. That is not true. We do get Phoenix's pick, but that is at number 21. Now this kind of stinks. I do believe the Thunder get our pick at number 11. It was top 10 protected. Now I don't mind having veterans on the roster whatsoever. Norman Powell wanted like $8 million on a new extension. So I think I'm going to ride him out. He could play around 14, 15 ish minutes a night next year as a nice scoring wing off the bench. So let's see what happens here in the top five. The San Antonio Spurs, this pick is from the DeJounte Murray trade. They pair up Cooper Flag with Victor Wimbanyama, which is insane. The Wizards at number two take Kamama Lock. So they're going to have a Malak, Alex Sar front court, which is kind of sick. Dylan Harper goes three to be in the backcourt with uh, Scoot Henderson, which could mean Anthony Simons is on the block. I don't really think he would fit our mold um, at all right now. Toronto is trading the third overall, excuse me, fourth overall pick for Desmond Bain and Gigi Jackson. Whoa. And Memphis takes Ace Bailey. That's a shocker of a trade. And Brooklyn at five. Uh, they take Nolan Traor. So we're here at number 25. I'm not sure if this guy that we take right now is going to crack the rotation. I think Ian Jackson, we could develop into a scoring wing behind Norman Powell eventually. I like Isaiah Evans a ton. He did impress a lot of people in the Duke, like inner squad scrimmage recently. We could go him. Carter Knox, we could go Aaron Bradshaw if we want a big man. Donovan Freeman out of Syracuse. I do like DJ Wagner here, but I haven't really taken Isaiah Evans yet, so let's take him. And yeah, if Norman Powell starts to regress, he could be a guy for us going forward. And then we ended up taking a big man out of China, which is pretty cool for the Rockets. It's kind of fitting. We take Yang here in the second round. So we're going to sign both those guys. Fred Van Vliet, 45 million, not worth it. We're going to decline that. We're going to try to bring him back though as a backup point guard for us going forward. We're going to decline the option on Aaron Holiday. Yep, this is going to be interesting. Shane Goon and Jalen Green are going to get max offers from us right now. So um, Jay Sean Tate, yeah, we're probably not going to bring back. Looking at the roster, it's, it's going to be interesting because they're going to want a lot of money. Jabari Smith's probably going to want a lot of money next year. We could bring back James Harden. That would be kind of cool. Um, maybe at one point we do Fred Van Vliet for James Harden. So as a backup, that's a decent amount. It's paying $22 million a year for a backup point guard a lot. It is. But by the time that contract is done, I mean, Thompson will be a free agent. So it kind of works out for us. I'll even give him a player option next year. So this is going to give him like full control over his deal going forward. Jalen Green gets a deal from the Clippers. How much is it? Three years, 104. All right. I do believe we're able to get out of that. So I am going to match it. And Jalen Green and Fred Van Vliet are coming back. And interesting enough, like Alperu and Shangun did not get a deal here after free agency. So we're going to give them the five-year max contract as well. We're $203 million. So I do believe we have our roster figured out. We have Fred Van Vliet and Amen Thompson, but Amen's going to start. We have Jalen Green at the two. Reed Shepard is the sixth man. Norman Powell, Cam Whitmore at the three. Cam is starting. Then we have uh, Jabari Smith Jr. and Tari Eason. I think we could look for a different center, just maybe better than Jock Wandale. And oh my God, can I give him my full mid-level? Yes, let's do this. Brooke Lopez a one-year deal this would be huge as a nice rim protector and floor spacer and just a veteran coming off the bench that's huge and now Brun Shagun is our highest overall followed by Jay uh, Jalen Green Amen Thompson Jabari Smith Jr. these guys are progressing yeah Fred Van Vliet's progressing a little bit there goes Brooke and Norman Powell but they each just have one year left on their deals and I'm in love with this rotation this year 30 minutes to the backcourt of Amen Thompson and Jalen Green excited to see what Amen can do here as the starting point guard Cam Whitmore at the three Jabari Smith Jr. at the four Shangun at the five playing the most minutes on this team and a loaded bench of Reed 
Shepard, Fred Van Vliet, Tari Eason, Brooke Lopez, and Norman Powell, which is going to be four-star balanced under Ime Odoka. Instead of having Alper and Shangun being mentored by Brooke Lopez, it's going to be Jabbar Smith Jr., who I think could use it a little bit more. And then obviously keeping Fred Van Vliet as the mentor for him and Thompson. And same with Cam Whitmore being mentored by Norman Powell. And we are here at the 2026 trade deadline. We are performing better than what we were last year. So we're seeing the progression from this team on both ends of the floor. We're currently in the 5 seed. We're 29 and 20 right now. We have a 2.9 point differential. So we got some notable things here. Shane Goon has been good. Um, He hasn't really taken that next step offensively that I would have liked him to now that he's making $40 million a year. Jalen Green has been more efficient, which is great to see. Cam Whitmore, um, his three-point shot free throws. I mean, his overall not been really efficient. The one thing I want to highlight, Jabari Smith Jr. in a contract year has not been playing very well whatsoever, which is kind of scary that this team is doing good. Brooke Lopez, I think should just stop taking threes. 2K is not a big fan of it right now. I mean, Thompson, 59% from the field, 12 and a half points, seven rebounds, six assists. He could be on an all defensive team. Reed Shepard has been a very efficient six man for us. But it's a little alarming to see this from Jabari Smith Jr. Also, Tari Eason has been a fine blue guy. He is a free agent at the end of the year as well. I don't think I'm going to make any trades at the deadline here. It's a new day for me. I wanted to think this over as well because it's tough. I don't want to move like Jabari Smith Jr. I still think he could be a legitimate building block for this team going forward. And then maybe he just plays on a one-year proof of deal. But he's been kind of awful this year. It's not even like he's been bad. He's been awful. I still think he can come around, though. We'll see. I wonder if Fred Van Vliet is going to opt in or out of this deal. It seems like he would opt in, which is fine. Um, but yeah, we're going to see how the second half plays out. Well, we're going to hope we can make the playoffs for the fifth seed right now. Let's see what happens. So Nicole Jokic ends up winning his fourth MVP of his career. He averaged 24 points, 11 rebounds, and 9 assists. We need Alperin Shangun to average those numbers one day. Nolan Traor takes home Rookie of the Year. Ben Simmons, wow, sixth man of the year here in Charlotte. For some reason, when you look at the stats here in the performance awards section, kind of just erases some of the previous numbers for some of these guys. Like Ben Simmons' career just started in 2022. Apparently, AD wins Depoy. Devin Carter most improved, and Shaco just Alexander wins clutch player of the year. All NBA first team does have Anthony Davis in the post LeBron era, making it. I don't think we're going to have any Houston Rockets, and we do not. Anybody on the all defensive teams would be cool, um, but we don't get anybody there. And then for the all rookie teams, we get nobody on first team, nobody on second team, and we finish the season as the sixth seed. So we avoid the playing tournament, which is nice. We're going to be taking on the Oklahoma City Thunder in round number one. These two teams have had their share, uh, fair share of history. Obviously, they were partners in the Russell Westbrook Chris Paul deal. And that was a reason why we didn't own our first round pick last year. So taking a look at the stats here, Jalen Green was our leading scorer. We'll see who could become a playoff riser. Is it going to be Jalen Green that could step up? Could it be Shane Green that stepped up? Could it even be Cam Whitmore, who was a little bit inconsistent throughout the year? Reed Shepard has been a very efficient six man for us. Will Jabari Smith Jr. bounce back? Because he did have a nice second half. You could see the field goal percentage eclipsed 40%. The three point percentage eclipsed 30%. And the free throw percentage still stayed above 80%. And for the playoff rotation, it's going to be interesting because we're going to definitely have a 10-man rotation, but Brooke Lopez is probably going to get like seven minutes tonight. He's going to be maybe our 2019, I was going to say Marcus Saul on the Raptors, but probably even like more of a Laker Marcus Saul at this point. We're going to have Norman Powell probably play around 14 minutes a night. Fred Van Vliet is really good for us, but I need to see more of the other guys. He's no longer in our future plans as a legitimate building block. So I want to see more out of Reed Shepard. I want to see more out of a man Thompson, who I think had a very good statistical year. Let's see what Jalen Green can do in the playoffs. Let's see what Jabari Smith Jr. and Alperin Shangun can do in the playoffs. Round number one, game Game one against the Thunder. We ended up losing game one by 33 points. All right. Uh, Jalen Green, 6 of 13. Alperin Shangun, 5 of 14. Jabari Smith Jr. didn't shoot the ball well. Neither did Cam Whitmore. Uh, Reed Shepard didn't shoot the ball well. I mean, Thompson only took four shots. Not off to a good start whatsoever. And we dropped the first two games. I mean, going up against OKC is very tough. But getting blown out in the first two was embarrassing. Tari Eason... I guess is deciding to show up. That's nice. Alperin Shangun played a little bit better here, but still not great. I mean, it's going to be a small sample size if we get swept, but I thought maybe we could push the Thunder to like six games. I would say this team, I mean, makes it to the playoffs for the first time in a minute. It would be nice, but yeah, we're going to just lay down and we're going to lose. Are we going to get blown out at home? Are we going to, yep, we're probably going to lose game three here. We're down by 13 with two minutes left. We ended up losing by 13. Jalen Green, six of 16. He hasn't been great for us in the playoffs. Shangun, has been better and uh, like he was good in this game at least efficiency wise Fred Van Vliet hit nine free throws and I think it, it's always unfair to blow a team up too early like if Boston blew up Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum too early they never would have won the 2024 title who knows we just got to get to see more playoff experience and chemistry going on but this has not been the, the greatest start to their playoff 
uh, resume whatsoever. As we are going to get swept by the Thunder, and every game was a blowout. Damn. Chengu was pretty good at game four. Uh, Jalen Green took eight shots. Uh, Jabari Smith Jr., he wasn't good in the playoffs whatsoever, man. What is going on with Jabari Smith Jr.? How did Amen Thompson do? He averaged eight points in this series. He averaged 3.8 fouls a night, shot 55% from the field, didn't hit a single three-point shot. Reed Shepard, 11 and a half points. He was really efficient. I just don't know what his spot is. Is he a shooting guard? Is he a point guard? We got to figure that out. And the NBA Finals are going to be between the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Cavs sweep Minnesota. And Evan Mobley is your Finals MVP. Wow. There goes Brooke Lopez. He ends up retiring. His last year with the Rockets did not end the greatest. As Rockets legend, James Harden heads to the Hall of Fame. We are going to retire his jersey. So it is draft lottery time. This is going to be the 2026 draft, which... It would be nice to have the number one pick from Washington, but there is a protection on it. And you know what's funny? It goes to the Knicks anyway. So that is from the Alperun Shangun draft night trade, actually, that Houston sent it to OKC, and then OKC sent it to the Knicks to get Usman Jang back in the 2022 draft. So that pick wasn't going to be ours to begin with. The Spurs are going to be picking six, seven, and eight. Philadelphia owns our pick at number 20. I want to double check that. And yeah, we're going to lose out on our first round pick. That is the last pick removed from the Russell Westbrook Chris Paul trade which honestly is a very underrated trade for Sam Presti so yeah we're really not going to add a rookie this year which is fine I, I mean I'm fine with that let's just see if there's like a generational guy is it Drew Purdue going number one yeah out of Georgetown 6-4 point guard looks pretty good I believe we have some seconds we have three of them I don't know if I'm going to use all of them right now because we do have some guys from last year that could crack the rotation like um Hans Yang if he's gonna be the backup center let's see if Isaiah Evans gets into the rotation as well if I don't bring back Norman Powell and I want to see if I can move three second rounders for pick 31 and the Wizards agree to that so we are gonna actually have pick 31 in the strip which is nice as Drew Purdue wow the Lakers won the lottery he's gonna be teamed up with Anthony Davis that is kind of sick we are gonna take Evan Adams here a 6'9 power forward out of Pacific also the guy that went second overall is Dylan Whitehead couldn't he be brothers with Dariq? Well, he ended up going to BYU, not Duke. But that is kind of funny that Dariq Whitehead drafted by the Nets in 2023. And then Dylan Whitehead by the Nets in 2026. So let's sign Evan Adams here. Um, not going to sign him to a two-way. It's going to be a full roster spot. So Fred Van Vliet opts in, which is fine. $23 million is definitely a tradable contract for sure. Uh, we're going to bring back Hans Yang here on the team option. We got to figure out, yeah, how much is Jabari Smith Jr. worth? How much is Tari Eason worth as well? I mean, honestly, for the minimum, I'll bring back Norman Powell. That's fine. Even if he doesn't crack the rotation. Yeah, I'm not paying Tari Eason $29 million. I just can't do that. Jabari Smith, 26. I mean, I feel like I'm getting in at a low point. I would do maybe a two-year deal. I think we're definitely going to wait on these guys, though. There's no need to sign them right now. I also want to see if I could bring in Dayron Sharp on a one plus one to be the backup to Shangun. Definitely better than Han Yang, and I think... Could be somebody good going forward. Okay, no, never mind. I can't afford him. All right, so I'm going to give Jabari Smith Jr. a one-year deal. $22 million. That's a lot of money, you know, with the Texas uh, state tax, too. He's going to be making majority of that. So that is going to be a nice, comfortable contract that he could play for a larger contract after this year. And I offer the same thing to Tari Eason as well. It's one year, about $15 million. I just wanted to see if I can get another center in case Han Yang is kind of unplayable. So, yeah, could I maybe snag Kevon Mooney? And could I maybe snag... Xavier Tillman, maybe not him. I'm just going to look for some minimums right now. Uh, so we'll bring Steven Adams back to Houston. Why not? And we're going to get all these guys, including Tar Eason, one year, $16 million. So we had the playoff experience last year. Um, the rotation is going to be interesting this year because I don't think Norman Powell's going to be in it. I want to see what I can get out of Isaiah Evans, the former Duke Blue Devil. We'll see how this group can improve because it is the young core of the squad. And they're all still extremely young as we're going into just, you what, year number three? Like 24-year-olds, 22-year-olds, 23-year-olds. This team is still very young. So I think this is going to be the bench unit. We're going to have Reed Shepard, Tari Eason, Fred Van Vliet, Isaiah Evans, and Jock Wandale. I'm going to give the starting center spot over Looney or Yang or Adams. We do have a ton of centers right now. And I'm going to go a little bit less minutes to Jabari Smith Jr. this year. Kim Whitmore around 27 tonight. Amen Thompson around 29. So this team could look very different next year because we have Shane Goon locked up. Jalen Green still locked up for now. Everybody else could be gone at the end of the year outside of Reed Shepard, Isaiah Evans, and Evan Adams. Because, yeah, Whitmore is going to be a restricted free agent. Same with Amen Thompson. Eason and Jabari Smith Jr., I believe, are going to be unrestricted free agents. Same with Fred Van Vliet. Same with Vondell. Same with Powell, Looney, Adams, Yang. 
Londale, yeah. This is going to be a very different team potentially next year. We start off the season at home against New Orleans. We blow them out. Great game from Shane Goon. Solid game from Jalen Green. He didn't miss a single shot from the field from three or from the line. Reed Shepard at 21. Amen Thompson had a triple-double. All right, guys. Good start to the season. And I wonder if we're going to a breaking point with this core. We're 25 and 25 at the deadline. We have a 3.5 point differential. So... We could be 10 games above 500. Like the Pelicans have a lower point differential. I think we'll be strong in the second half. We have a higher point differential than the 34 and 18 Warriors. It's just, I don't know. I'm seeing the Blazers at the top and I kind of want to be there as well. They have Scoot, Simon Sharp, Denny and Klingon. And that team is just getting it done with Dylan Harper as the sixth man. Here is the scoring allocation right now with Alperin Shangun averaging 21 points, 8.8 rebounds, 5.9 assists. Like he's doing it all as an offensive hub for us um, in the half court. 28% from three. I'd like for that to be a little bit better. Jalen Green is turning into a very efficient number two option. Like 18 and a half points, 51% from the field, 39% from three is great. 35 million a year though. It is a pretty penny. Uh, Cam Whitmore. I mean, I think he has the potential to be a 20 point per game scorer in this league, but over the last three years, I think that's a good sample size. He is going to be below average from the field, below average from three and below average from the line. So yeah, he's improved as a defender 100%. But I wonder if there could be a sign and trade scenario with him in the offseason. Reed Shepard, extremely efficient. He's shooting 47% from three, 93% from the line. This dude is a stud. Jamar Smith Jr., it's tough, man. It really is tough. I don't know if I would look to move him at this deadline because uh, we're giving him five years now. And I just don't know if he's going to take that next step. Um, as a nice complimentary piece to Shangun. There is a man Thompson, um, who's given me good rebounds, like all around play. It's just, I wish he could shoot the ball. Brevin Vliet, yeah, it's falling off a little bit for him right now. Isaiah Evans, I think has shown some promise right now. So I'm going to look at the trade block. So I'm actually going to make this trade with the New Orleans Pelicans. They are really interested in Jabari Smith Jr. And I'm kind of looking at the long game here because I do believe Trey Murphy can be a Cam Whitmore replacement at the end of the year for $20 million. I think Cam Whitmore is going to want more than that. So I'm comfortable paying Trey Murphy $20 million this year, 21 next year, 22 the year after. We do take on Robert Williams, who provides us a very good backup center, $16 million a year. It will definitely be tradable on draft night or in the offseason, so we could look to move him then. So we are going to shake up this team a little bit. We are going to be sending Jabari Smith Jr. to New Orleans. We're going to be picking up Trey Murphy and Robert Williams, um, and we're also sending out Jock Wandale as well well so they're gonna accept that and i found a trade that i like here with the detroit pistons we're gonna be sending them uh fred van vliet and steven adams to expiring deals we're gonna be getting cam johnson an expiring contract who hasn't been the greatest this year but i think can actually be someone that could be behind tari eason because tari is now going to start for us and then he could also i think play alongside shane Goon if he's ever in there at the same time and i'm getting a future water protected pick from detroit so cam johnson and robert williams are going to get just around 10 minutes a night that's fine throughout the second half of this year isaiah evans i still want to see um what i can out of him you got reed shepherd and trey murphy off the bench and a starting five of thompson green whitmore eason and alper and shane Goon. And this is going to be a really nice kind of evaluation period for Tari Eason. Do we want to sign him long term in the offseason to be the guy uh, with Alper and Shangun for the next five plus years? Because we're looking at extensions right now. I'm not going to do it now, but Amen Thompson wants a decent amount of money. Cam Whitmore, same thing. All right, so I'm actually going to make one more trade before this deadline is over. Yeah, I'm going to be sending Cam Whitmore to the Utah Jazz. They're going to be looking for another high level scorer uh, alongside Devin Vassell because I believe Lowry Marketing got traded to the Spurs. Yeah. Oh my God, Cooper Flag, Wemby, Markin, and the West is going to be insane. So I'm going to be getting the Lakers unprotected pick. Utah's trying to shed some cap as well, and I'm going to be taking on TJ McCollum's contract, which I may just have to eat for next year. We're giving them Kevon Moody, but they're getting Cam Whitmore, who they can have as a perimeter score. That's probably worth more than the odds of them getting number one. I doubt they get number one because that's just how the lottery works. So Utah's cashing in already on a proven guy with potential, and I wasn't going to pay Cam Whitmore at the end of the year after you saw me trade for Trey Murphy. So that is going to hurt the roster a little bit, but now we can actually have Trey Murphy as the starting small forward. He's going to get 32 minutes tonight let's go 35 to Shane Goon 35 to Jalen Green um let's go 30 to Tari Eason let's see what he could do there Reed Shepard as the ultimate six man uh we're gonna go probably around 16 minutes a night to Time Lord to Cam Johnson and we'll go 15 to Isaiah Evans uh CJ McCollum is not gonna crack the rotation he's just gonna be a veteran for us right now so if we just take a look at that Lakers pick which is now a premier asset in the 2027 draft they are 13 and 36 wow they're bad Utah is also bad so maybe they're fine with just having their pick um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, who knows what's going to happen in the lottery. Mo Brown looks pretty good out of Washington State. He is the guy you'd like to win. 
the lottery for. So we'll see. Sasha Dragic could be pretty good as well. We'll just see what happens. We can also trade that pick. So Vuka Doncic wins the 2027 MVP award. Drew Purdue wins rookie of the year for the LA Lakers. I'm surprised they were that bad with him and Anthony Davis, but maybe that's asking a lot out of the rookie. VJ Edgecombe wins most improved. Okay, in OKC. And Jason Kidd is actually the coach of the year. So they go from one legendary point guard, Chauncey Billups, to another one and Jason Kidd. Do we get an Alperun Shangun All-NBA appearance? Yes, we do. So he was a top 15 player in the league this year. 21 points, 8 and a half rebounds, 6.3 assists. It is Shane Goon's team right now, 100%. Conkin is on all rookie first team with Julio Bethea, Drew Purdue, or Chomchi, Alexa Leonard. Okay, so we ended up making the playing tournament as the ninth seed. So, yeah, I mean, 43 and 39, we were, what, last year? We ended up going 47 and 35, so we ended up losing four more games. But I just feel like we're better than that. We had the fifth best point differential in the West. I think we're going to be okay. And I'm hoping Jalen Green and Alperin Shankun can carry us throughout this playing tournament. So we're taking on the Phoenix Suns in the first leg. The scary thing is we got to beat Phoenix, and then we got to beat the loser of the 7-8 matchup. Things are looking pretty good for us against Phoenix right now. We are blowing them out at home. Yeah, oh my god, they scored 71 points. We beat them by 44. Ahmed Thompson had a triple-double. Trey Murphy had 23. Jalen Green had 25. That is not great for them. So we're taking on San Antonio. Somehow they are a playing tournament team, and they lost the first leg with Wemby, Markinen, Cooper Flag. That's a tough matchup for us, man. I, I don't know if we're going to beat them. I don't even think we would beat them in a playoff series. And we unfortunately lose by 21. Jalen Green had 24. Shane Goodman, 6 of 20 in the biggest game of the year. 0 of 9 for 3. I think next year, a big change we're going to make with Shane Goon. He is done being a high volume three-point shooter. Portland beats San Antonio in round number one. And Portland and New York are in the NBA Finals. Cat and Scooter, Conference Finals MVPs. I think Portland just blew a 3-0 lead against the Knicks to lose the 2027 finals. As there goes KD, he's like, yeah, this team's going nowhere. I'm going to retire. Vucevic retires. Tobias Harris, Jonas Valanciunas. KD is going to head to the Hall of Fame, obviously. So it is time for the draft lottery. And I think now is when we start to get Brooklyn's first round picks back and we get an extra Phoenix pick in there from that deal as well. So there's a chance we can have three top 10 picks. We're going to have three lottery picks guaranteed. 14 is going to be Phoenix. 13 is going to be Memphis. Wait, did that just say that our pick? Wait, wait. I think actually after we selected 14 via Phoenix, our pick, oh my God, has jumped into the top four. Oh my God. But we own a swap with the Nets, so we're not going to be able to get our pick and the Nets pick if it is going to be us. Okay, so the Nets via Philly is there. Um, if we're picking one and the Nets are picking two, we get one. If the Nets pick one and we pick two, yeah. So the Nets just jumped into the top four. So we are guaranteed a top four pick, not even taking into account what that Lakers pick can be. As it looks like the Kings just jumped into the top four, I'm not sure where the Lakers are going to end up as the Clippers are going to be six. The Knicks, wow, are they going to be five via Washington? Oh my God. Okay, so let's see what happens here at number four. Is this going to be the Rockets? It goes to the Nets. Yeah, so we have the swap with them. So the Nets get their pick there. I'm 99% sure we're going to have two top three picks. Number three is going to be the Houston Rockets. Is this one from the Lakers or is this our pick? This is our pick. Maybe I'm very happy we just lost in the playing tournament. So that means I think us and Sacramento are fighting for number one. And it looks like we're going to get the number one pick from the Lakers. Damn. Lottery luck was on our side as the Rockets get the number one pick from that Cam Whitmore trade. That's kind of crazy. We have one, we have three, and we have 14. That is insane that our pick jumped up from 14 to three. You never see that, especially when I'm the one controlling these picks. All right, so this is where we can maybe go all in on a move. Do we look at upgrading the Jalen Green position? Do we go... Jalen Green and pick one. I don't even think I'd get anything offered. I do. Two and Karen Fox. I don't know. Like the Milwaukee Bucks were bad. Could I trade for Giannis? I don't know. <laughs> I might actually throw in an offer. Why not? Could I trade for Joel Embiid? They were bad as well. Could I trade for Jason Tatum? I'm going to try these things. So I feel like Giannis is going to be insanely tough to pull off. I mean, we do have valuable players to make this trade go through. Like it would be Jalen Green. It would be one and it'd be three. That's a package and a half. And then it'd be a Reed Shepard and Men Thompson backcourt. It would be Trey Murphy at the three, Giannis at the four, and Shane Good at the five. Would they accept this? No, they don't. I want to see if they would, though. I'll give you 14. I will give you CJ McCollum. I don't know if that's going to help. Um, or I would give you Robert Williams um, as well. That's a ton. They say no. Okay. I really don't know how a Embiid Shane Good frontcourt would work, but... I mean, do I want to trade Shane Goon for Embiid? Not really, but I would maybe try to work out um, a 
Let's see. Can I move? I don't know. It'd be like Embiid at the four, Shingun at the five. I'm scared that they're going to do this, but I don't even know if I want Embiid. They say, I don't think they're going to do this. And I'll throw in Robert Williams. That's a package and a half for Joel Embiid. They say no. Okay. What about Zion Williamson? He's up to a 97 overall. Could I trade you Jalen Green for Zion Williamson? Obviously not. Could I give you Jalen Green? I would like to keep number one and 14 for Zion. And I'll give you Robert Williams back. They say no. Damn. And I'll give you CJ McCollum back. Uh, unfortunately, they can't do that. I will throw in... I mean, I kind of want to keep number one. So I'll throw in two other future first round picks for Zion Williamson. They say no. Damn. And the last guy I'm going to try is going to be Jason Tatum. I would give you Jalen Green. I would give you pick three. I would maybe throw in pick one for Jason Tatum. Um, I'll give you Robert Williams. And okay, so they say no to that. I will give you my pick next year unprotected. And I'll give you the Pistons pick unprotected for Jason Tatum. They say no. What about instead of the Pistons pick, I give you number one. That is so much. Jalen Green one three robert williams and two future first round picks but i'm getting jason tatum will they say yes to this they say yes okay um yeah i wonder if i could have done that for for zion i just traded for jason tatum that is actually my biggest trade ever yeah um let's hope that shangun could be an elite number two because i don't have any more draft picks the celtics get mo brown out of washington state i mean that's how you start a rebuild man they get jalen green who they can move you get mo brown who should be a beast right away he's six foot six and they have the number three pick where they take a point guard, Mel Woodson out of Utah State. That's a backcourt for the future. And I believe they also had the 12th pick um, and they take Sasha Dragic and they had the 14th pick, Clarence Temple. It's a pretty good draft for them. We got Ronnie Ramsey here in the second round. Pick up the team options on Isaiah Evans, Evan Adams, and Reed Shepard. Amen Thompson is going to get probably a bag for me this offseason, 100%. Um, and I guess Trey Murphy could be the backup point guard, or excuse me, the backup small forward, or we make Jason Tatum a power forward, which I'm fine doing. Tara Eason doesn't have any real offers out there. We're going to bring back Norman Powell and Cam Johnson on one-year deals. I would still like to bring back Tara Eason, and I think we should be able to. So I offered him and Thompson a big contract, and he's going to accept it. Five years, $190 million. I offered Tara Eason two years, $54 million, and he's going to accept that $27 million a year. I think it's very generous. And I'm also going to look to sign Ben Shepard on a one plus one uh, with a team option. He's going to accept that. Hans Yang really wants a decent amount of money. I think I also sent, yeah, Robert Williams in that trade as well. I don't even know if I could offer him this. Okay, so yeah, who is my backup center right now? We don't technically have one. So it's probably going to be someone that knows the system. And it's going to be Jock Londale, who we're going to give a minimum contract to. And he's going to accept that. As Vuka Doncic goes to the Suns, that's kind of a crazy switch up. So Jason Tatum is a 94 slash 95. Shane Goon's a 91 slash 92. Then Man Thompson's getting really good. Reed Shepard's going to be a starter this year, which I'm very excited for. Isaiah Evans is getting a lot better. And we got Hans Yang back. So I think he's actually going to play over Jock Londale. Yeah, a lot of these guys are regressing, but it's nice to have veterans in the locker room. All right, so this is going to be the rotation right now. Um, we're going to give a couple more minutes to Man Thompson, Reed Shepard. Um, Trey Murphy is going to be the starting three. We're going to see if we want to make any switches throughout the year, which would be Jason Tatum to the three, Tari Eason to the four, and Trey Murphy is the sixth man. But for now, we're going to have Eason, Evans, Yang, and Ben Shepard off the bench. And I want to see what Evan Adams, our, our former number, what, 31st overall pick can do in just a couple minutes a night. System proficiency under Ime Odoka. So we reunite Tatum and Odoka, which is pretty cool. Four and a half star balance. This team should have title goals this year because we just traded for one of the best players in the NBA and we're off to a good start. So here at the trade deadline, we are 41 in nine. Shane Goon and uh, Jason Tatum, I think, have done a great job as a number one and number two scoring option together. Both of them are averaging pretty much around 22 and a half points per game. Amen Thompson is shooting 61% from the field. I'll take that. If you're not getting your threes, you might as well be one of the best guards um, inside the three-point line. Reed Shepard in a much more expanded role. Yeah, the efficiency has gone down, which is something to keep an eye on. He's up to a 90 overall, though. I really like where we're heading right now. Isaiah Evans has turned into a legitimate rotational guy for us on such a cheap contract. Uh, we are 41 to 9, like I said. Trey Murphy is averaging just 9.4 points, which is kind of disappointing. Something we will take into account come playoff time. Point differential wise, we're the top team in the West. And right behind us is Portland. And we have the best point differential in the NBA. I don't believe it. Alperun Shangun just won MVP. Wow, 23 points nine rebounds seven assists shane Goon's an mvp that's actually kind of crazy mo brown the number one pick he looks really good he ends up winning rookie of the year but we got jason tatum liam mcneely six man of the year wemby depoy jt top and most improved donovan mitchell clutch player of the year Ime Udoka coach of the year 69 and 13. we trade for jason tatum and we're right now the best team in the nba i would say we don't get a tatum um appearance on an all nba first or second team 
but we do no i was gonna say we get him on all of 13 but that's amen thompson no jason tatum appearance okay no amen thompson all defensive first team honors but he makes all defensive second team there is mo brown um and no other celtics made an all rookie team so we are the one seed in the west taking on the pelicans in round number one we tried trading for zion do they no longer have Okay, they no longer have Jabari Smith Jr. And Trey Murphy hasn't been the greatest for us, so this hasn't really been the biggest win-win trade. Jabari Smith Jr. is currently on the Atlanta Hawks. He signed a one-year deal with them. And he was actually probably pretty good. He was the best year of his career, I think. So for the playoffs, we're going we're going hard here. I think we want to have... Oh man, maybe Ben Shepard's going to play. Evan Adams probably not great as a rookie. So Ben Shepard's going to get like eight minutes a night. Let's go 14 to Yang, who's going to be a solid backup center for us. Uh, maybe 12 minutes tonight, actually. We can go 22 to Isaiah Evans, who I'm honestly debating starting over Trey Murphy at this point. Honestly, let's do that. We're going to have the Duke connection at the forward spots because Evans did go to Duke. He's going to get 27 minutes tonight. We're going to go 36 to Shane Goon, 37 to Tatum. Let's go 36 to Amen Thompson, 34 to Reed Shepard. Round number one against New Orleans. Game one, we end up winning it by 11, 138, 127. Shane Goon with a 31-point triple-double. Amen Thompson almost with a 30-point triple-double. Tatum and Shepard get it done as well. Game number two goes to Houston. We win by 16. Reed Shepard is showing up, showing that he can be an efficient player on this increased volume. Game three goes to Houston. This hasn't really been like, a, like we're up 3-0, but not every game has been kind of a blowout. All these games have been pretty close. We scored 46 points in the fourth quarter to come back and win this game. Tatum at 31. And then game number four is going to go to the Houston Rockets. 141-108. Shane Goon had 29 and 10. So in round number two, we're going to be taking on the Oklahoma City Thunder, a team that knocked us out of the playoffs a few years ago. This is a great team. It's a, definitely a championship-worthy team. But we win game one. We blow out them. Demen Thompson had a 28-point triple-double. And we are 5-0 and in the playoffs. But there is our first L. We get blown out. Oh, that is a disgusting fourth quarter as the thunder hand us our first l of the playoffs and our second l as well oh this isn't good all right we're down two to one we have yet to feel adversity here in the playoffs can we come back two to one maybe tie it up and just honestly let's win three in a row we have a great first quarter terrible defensive second quarter but good enough offensive second quarter third quarter hasn't been too kind to us let's close this out we're up by 15 and we're not going to choke this. We dropped 150 on the road. Trey Murphy showing up, knocking down eight threes. Amen Thompson with a 23-point triple-double. He's been insane in the playoffs. The Portland Trailblazers are already in the Western Conference Finals. Can we win game number five at home? Let's go up three to two. We have a very solid first half, a good third quarter. Things are looking good for us. And we're going to be going up three games to two. That's a huge answer to going down two games to one. And here we go, game number six. I don't want to go to a game seven. I don't. It would be back home in Houston, but I want to win game six on the road. We're down by 12. This has not been good. We need some type of fourth quarter comeback. Down by 13. I think we're going to a game seven. Oh boy, I'm not ready for this. All right, game seven, Houston OKC. Oh God, I'm nervous. Come on, man. Come on. We, we're down two to one. We take a three to two lead. If momentum is going to say anything... OKC might have this. OKC might have this. I'm scared. Great third quarter. Great third quarter. We're up by 13. Oh my God, we're going to win. Let's go. We're going to win. That is huge. We win by 21 points. 135, 114. Shangu drops 20. Reed Shepard, 23 points. He has been great for us in the playoffs. Tatum is averaging 50, 40, 90 splits. And we're in the conference finals to take on the two-seeded Blazers who are 8-1 in the playoffs. They have an elite backcourt of Scoot Henderson and Dylan Harper, Shaden Sharp, and Denny Dia at the forward spots. There's Donovan Klingon and Anthony Simon. Still have Aiden. They've acquired Avita Zubots. And they have Ben Simmons as well. And they take game one. They win by eight. Game number two is going to go to the Houston Rockets. Thank God we blow them out of Men Thompson. With a 36-point triple-double, we take home game three by eight. Oh man, Reed Shepard drops 36. This backcourt has been elite for us in the playoffs. Game four goes to Portland. Damn, man, it's a brand new series here. Shaden Sharp has been unreal in the playoffs. Game number five goes to Houston. Oh my God, we beat him by 40. Alperun Shangun with 33, 10, and seven. Let's not go to a game seven, please. And we win in six. And we are in the NBA Finals. We beat them by one. We're gonna be taking on the winner of the Cavs and the Raptors who are going to game seven. And it's going to be the Toronto Raptors, Scotty Barnes versus Amen Thompson, who each won conference finals MVP. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can beat Toronto. They have quickly Dick, Desmond Bain, Scotty Barnes. Kind of love that floor spacing for them, but it looks like they traded away RJ Barrett for Desmond Bain. Game number one, battle of two red uh, color teams here. We beat them by 16. 
Great start. Game number two is going to go to Toronto, man. All right, so they beat us by one. The only easy series was round number one against New Orleans. It's been very tough since. We take a two to one lead, 134, 125. What's making me feel better, I feel like Portland and OKC are better than this Toronto team. And we take a three to one lead, 141, 94. Tatum drops 35. Ahmed Thompson with a crazy triple double. And let's see if we can win the finals on our home floor. We have a great second quarter, great third quarter. We're up by 18. It's looking pretty good for us right now. Jason Tatum guarded by Scotty Barnes. Let's see what we can do. Tatum, back him down. He only has 14 points in this one. Pull up jumper. That's no good. That's Tatum's shot too. They have Isaiah Jackson at this uh, power forward spot right now. I don't know. That's who Tatum's guarding. Well, Desmond Bain's wide open for three. He hits that. All right. It's a 10-point game. Grady Dick stay with Reed Shepard. Well, Men Thompson does a terrible job trying to set a screen. So now we're going to have to expect Jason Tatum to do his signature move. Pull up jumper. That is going to be no good. They have Kaysen Wallace here, which is a great pickup in Toronto as he's going to the rim. Uh, Shangun is in this game right now. He's got 23 points. As Desmond Bain takes another three, no good, but a rebound by Isaiah Jackson. It's an eight point game. All right, are they gonna send the double? No, Shangun, he's getting guarded well. All right, so we're not really gonna be able to attack the rim too quickly here. Okay, and then Thompson gets very lucky. Oh man, I did not know he was cutting to the rim right there, but he finishes it inside. I don't know how Case and Wallace didn't get that steal. And then Thompson with 27, 8, and 9. I think he could be finals MVP. He's been putting up some insane stat lines. Scotty Barnes getting right around Jason Tatum, but Tatum. Good recovery defense right there. Remounted by Amen Thompson. Reed Shepard go to work. He's going to get by Grady Dick and throw it down. Reed has 33. Oh my God. Scotty going at Tatum again and he's going to get to the line. Damn, I wish I can get Amen Thompson one more rebound. He's got 29, 9, and 11 here and we're about to win the finals. All right, could I maybe get to the rim and get my own rebound? No, I don't want to get fouled. Oh my God. All right, so... The goal is going to be to miss the second one, which I might be able to do with ease. And then I somehow need him to get this rebound. All right, Amen Thompson, let's go. That's going to be early. Get in there. All right, I'm not going to be able to get the triple-double, unfortunately. But hey, we are going to win the NBA Finals, which is great. Kobe Bufkin, an unnecessary buzzer beater right there. But we are going to drop 146 here in Game 5 of the Finals and get it done with this. Not really core, because it did change a lot last offseason. But I'm glad we were able to get it done with Amen Thompson, Tari Eason, Reed Shepard, Alperun Shangun. And those are the four core Rockets that are still here. I did bring back Jock Wandale, but it's pretty much those four that stayed, which shocks me. I, if you would have asked me before this video, I would have definitely said Jabari Smith Jr. over Tari Eason. And I probably would have said Cam Whitmore or Jalen Green over Tari Eason as well. But I had an opportunity to go out and get Jason Tatum, who was on the trade block. The Celtics were underachieving, and I gave them a godfather package. I gave them what? One, three, 14, Robert Williams, Jalen Green, and two other future first round picks. That is an absolute haul. So, you know what? It's a win win trade because they have some great pieces in a rebuild, and we just got an NBA title out of it. And Amen Thompson is going to get finals MVP. I definitely think it's deserving. And finals MVP, yeah. Amen Thompson, 24 points, 11 rebounds, 11 assists, 1.4 steals. Dude was a beast. And this could be a dynasty in the making as well. I hope you guys did enjoy this Houston Rockets rebuild. If you did, I would appreciate you dropping a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments which team we should rebuild next, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.